Hello everyone, uh, this is part 4, so in this, in, this, uh, in this tutorial I'm gonna talk about adding some more parameters um, and then maybe running a schedule. Uh, so basically we've added a radius and arc length to this uh, piece of geometry. Now the last part of uh, information that we want to extract out of this would be the three points that make it up. So we want cor uh, a coordinate values for those three points, so x, y, z for each one of them. Um, let's go back to our definition in Grasshopper. Um, so we need to collect the three points that we used previously, the start, middle, and end, and then extract their x, y, z uh, coordinates. So again, um, keeping with the spirit of converting our units, Let's make sure we do that first before I forget about it. Um, so once we have that, you can see we have an X, Y, Z for each one of those points on each separate branch. Let's um, let's round those up, and I want to round those up to zero decimal places on. I want to keep it like that. There you go. Um, so what we're getting right now is a really simple XYZ values for each one of those uh, for each one of those points. Um, so what's going to happen next is we can just uh, create a parameter for it. And I want to I want to be able to stash them into three separate points. So I'm going to call this point one, and then I'm going to create one for for each one of the three points. I'm going to call this one point two. I call this one point three. Connect their names. So once we have those three values, um, let's use the list item component. And then if you zoom in, those uh, plus minus signs will appear. So basically that allows us to extract items from the list. So this will be the first item on that list, this will be the second item, so this is point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. And the only thing that we need to make sure is that we get the um, order of those points correctly. So if we were to um, hide everything but the points that we use to uh, create them, then we know that our zero index will be the top point. So if I want to make the top point point one, then I'll connect the zero index here, and then point two will be the middle, and then point three will be the bottom point. So once we have that, let me just check if our trees are correct. Perfect. And we have them converted into the feet already. Delete that. This looks uh, this looks good to be sent through. The only thing that we gotta pay attention to is that information convey um, like this in this format when it has parentheses, uh, commas, it's going to have to be a string, so it's going to be have to be a text parameter in Revit. So once we have, once we have all this um, set up, if you zoom in into the weave component that we used before, and then we add three more positions on it, we can add 
those three parameters that we just created and if you right click on the P and set multiple integers and then add those uh, fields to it we should be getting five items on each one of the branches which is perfect so once we have that we just need to create those uh, point parameters make sure that they're text type parameters in, uh, in Revit and we should be good to go so let's test it in Revit so again this add family and then we need to add the parameters I'll make a new shared parameter for each one of them and I'll call them point one and you want to change that to text and then point two and then point three so let's bring in point one making an instance text parameter Let's add another one, point two, instance, text, and then point three, instance, text. So this should open up a way for us to be able to import all that information at once. So let's clean that. Um, actually, I have to be here. Let's hit the G Revit. sync them up and let's see what we're getting there so here we are and we're getting the X Y Z coordinates for each one of those um, for each one of those files now the reason why I was making them a shared parameters is because if I go to view and Revit under schedules schedule quantity I can actually go to generic models and schedule those those three points I can schedule a arc length for each one of them and I can schedule radius for each one of them so if we were to tag each one of those arcs with a unique name, that could be another parameter that we might want to add. And then once we have that, we can uh, we can create a schedule. And in that schedule, it will have a unique name, and then it will have the X, Y, Z coordinates for each one of the points with an arc length and radius. So uh, this would be this could be one of the reasons why you want to create. Uh, this kind of parameters, short parameters, uh, just because you can schedule those later. Um, also, if you um, if you wanted to create, you can see some of those uh, files. I mean, uh, racing members there. If you wanted to create a reference plane, I'm typing in RP for reference plane. And the reason why I'm putting a reference plane there is because I actually want to place a section and the section is snapped to those reference planes. So what that gives me is a section that's perpendicular to our uh, parallel to our uh, piece of geometry but it's also perpendicular if I wanted to go here and create some dimensions on it. Uh, I'm not going to be dimensioning it, but I want to create a tag to tag each one of them with the parameters that we just created. So if I go to a new uh, family and I create a generic um, annotation, generic, uh, we can use a generic annotation and then under types we can use a we can change it to generic model tag and then create labels 
I'm going to create a new parameter from shared parameter file, and those are becoming available here as well. So they're not only schedulable, but you can have them here for tagging. Um, so I'm going to create an arc lamp and add it here. And then I'm going to create a line lamp. No, um, radius, I'm sorry. Add it here. And then let's do that. Um, you also want you want to I want them to drop to be below each other and then kind of center it and then you can create some sort of graphic um, mention that quickly make sure that it's um, that they're even This looks, uh, this looks okay. Let's load that into our project. And if I go to our view, I should be able to uh, tag each one of them. So let's free up that. I can have a tag that says that has a dimension and radius, so I don't like the graphic, if you ask me, and then if I edit the label, um, you can type in prefix for each one of them to actually describe what we're looking at. And this information becomes um, it becomes a tag, so you can tag each one of them, um, and then don't forget to delete red tags from your tag, otherwise it comes through with the tag. So this is why we made this a short parameter, so that we can tag them, and then we can schedule them. Um, and this is part of, uh, this is really important part of documenting in kind of uh, unusual geometry like this. Um, and we can also create real quickly another tag. Um, under annotation, generic annotation. So again, I'm going to change its type to generic model tag. Delete the red text. Create the label. And then create a new parameter from shared parameters for each one of the points. So there's going to be a tag that's going to uh, tag points. Okay, put it right in the middle. Load it into the project. And it follows to tag. and then free up that end. It 
it says just that point x y z so again you can add that information to the label as a prefix so that you make sure that it's point one and you can create as many of them uh, we can add more of those to get all the points um, if we just go through here point two I want to say point two and then another one for point three and then create breaks between those two so that they drop underneath each other load it into the project all of a sudden you gain coordinates for for each one of those so this is this is possibly all the information you need uh, to document a piece of geometry like this um, all straight out of all straight out of uh, Grasshopper and Revit native geometries. Um, Alright, um, there's gonna be part three, and I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over some more uh, different types of families, and I'm gonna show you a different way of doing the radius uh, calculation, uh, like I mentioned before. So thanks for watching, and um, hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry. Thank you.